Today I'm going to show you how I replaced my existing wood mantle with a reclaimed old beam and it went from looking like this to this. Welcome to part two in a series where I'm redoing my fireplace. Part one of the series was when I installed the German schmear technique on the brick of the fireplace. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But I have to warn you, if you do the German schmear and it turns out good, your friends and neighbors are gonna want you to do theirs too. Yeah, I, I found that out the hard way. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how I replaced my existing cheap wood mantle with a reclaimed beam from a local building. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you a couple lessons that I learned the hard way so maybe your installation will go a little bit easier. Now enough of the talking, let's get into the video. I was lucky enough to find a local place that salvages old lumber and turns it into flooring and they were willing to sell me a piece for my mantle. It was roughly a six foot piece and it cost me right at $100. I think you and I are going to have to figure out this mantelpiece together. I've done tons of woodworking projects over the years, but I've never refinished an old reclaimed beam out of an old house or a business such as this one. I know that you can sand it down and give it a totally different look, but my goal is to maintain some of this gray uh, patina, or this dirty kind of patina. And I know that when I I do sand it down to knock the edges of it off and get it where you can finish it. It's going to change the color. It's going to probably brighten it up some. But I'm going to do just as little as possible in giving it a smooth finish and then maybe a matte polyurethane. And one benefit I do have is this piece is longer than I need. I've got roughly probably a foot or what will end up being a couple six inch pieces that I'm going to cut off this beam. So I can use those cutoffs to experiment with the sanding and the and the stain itself or not the stain but the the clear coat that i intend to put on there so hopefully when i get to the mantle that's going to be installed on the fireplace i'll have the finish nailed down perfectly the first thing i did was to measure the length of my existing wood mantle i then had to take a good look at the beam to try to determine which surface i wanted for the top and the front um, this side was definitely going to be the bottom because it had a couple bad holes in it. I cut a piece of scrap lumber the exact length that I needed to help with the layout. I was lucky enough to find a beam that was roughly the same height and width as my existing mantle. Then I just took the beam to the miter saw to cut it to the finished length. My 10 inch miter saw wouldn't make the whole cut. I ended up having to flip the beam over to finish the cut. That's a pretty piece of wood right there. These are the two cutoffs that I ended up with. Surprisingly, they're kind of two different colors. This is more brownish tint to it. A little more gray on that side. And this one seems to be more, more gray. I guess it just depends on how they were outside and stacked in the lumber pile. First thing I'm gonna do is use the angle grinder and do an initial cleaning on one of these or both of these or just one surface. Hadn't figured that out yet. I used a wire brush attachment on my side grinder to see what it would look like. And it turns out it was a bit too aggressive. So far, I think I'm liking the section where I just sanded it with the 80 grit sandpaper and this is the brush surface with I think that brush was a little bit too aggressive that's the brush surface and this is just the 80 grit sandpaper and then I would just refine that down it's, it's not bad right now but I just think I would go a little bit uh, you know 120 maybe 180 I may go ahead and put some polyurethane on this side of this section so I can see what the differences will be, and maybe even on there. And I'm not trying to be real careful, I'm just kind of trying to get it on there since this is a uh, just a scrap piece. Next, I went ahead and sanded the entire beam 
first with the 80 grit and then with the 120. I wasn't using a lot of pressure, I was just letting the tool do the work. If you're getting some benefit out of this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps to get out to more people. And if you know someone that's thinking about redoing their metal, consider sharing this video with them. For the finish, I just went with this water-based Minwax Poly. It was in a clear matte finish. I didn't want a high sheen to the beam. I wanted it to look as natural as possible when I was finished. After the first coat of poly, I let it dry overnight and I came back and gave it a light sanding. I gave the beam a good blowing off and then I applied a second coat of poly. Now that I've got the finish for the mantle worked out, it's time to move on to the next part of the project, which is actually attaching the mantle to the fireplace. Um, and of course, I did a bunch of research online, and a lot of people were putting lag bolts into the stud, then cutting off the head of the lag bolts, and then drilling out the mantle and sliding it on to the lag bolts. And I went to Lowe's and I actually came across some pre-cut 3 8 by six inch threaded rod. And so my thought is, I can drill it into the stud about two inches and with the sheetrock that'll leave me three and a half inches going into the beam and the beam's only eight inches wide so that's approximately you know it's close to halfway into the beam and I've got a little mock-up here I'm going to use the cutoff from the beam and a two by four and see how it works as far as drilling the hole into the two by four and threading the rod in there my, my thought is I can either double nut this threaded rod or use some vice grips to, uh, to screw it into the stud because I'm not worried about uh, keeping these threads and not putting anything on there. This is essentially just a dowel that's going to give the beam uh, support this way, the weight of the beam. And once the beam is on these rods, which I'll probably have four of them, I will probably come from the, the top and screw some screws into the studs, which will keep the beam from coming off the wall. This will support it vertically and then the screws will keep it from coming off the wall. I picked up a couple different size drill bits for this project. I got the 5 sixteenths, a quarter inch, and a 3 8 inch drill bit. My thought is that the 3 8 inch drill bit will work for the, the threaded rod. It's the same size as the threaded rod, but I wasn't sure if that was going to be you know, tight enough when it goes on there. I didn't want it to be loose. And just in case the 3 8 was was too big or I felt like it was going on too easy, I've got a 5 16 which is a little bit smaller than the threaded rod, so that would force me to have to drive the beam on to the threaded rod, which would end up with a much tighter fit. And I got the quarter inch to use into the 2x4 to pre-drill a hole for the threaded rod, and I believe that'll give me enough bite once I put the threaded rod into the stud. That actually worked uh, very well. That was not uh, not difficult at all. Now I'm going to drill a hole into the cutoff of the mantle. I'm going to use the 3 8 bit to drill this.
And I've got my bit uh, taped off at three and a half inches so I know the depth that I need to go to. That actually, it's, it's snug when it goes in, but it's not too snug where a boot's gonna cause problem. And also when you screw this portion into the stud, it's not gonna be perfectly straight. So lining these holes up in the beam will actually make this a little bit tighter. Of course, the first thing I had to do to install the new mantle was to take everything off the mantle. Next, I had to take apart the existing wood mantle, which wasn't that difficult. I think there was like three finished nails holding it to the fireplace. Next, I located and marked the framing I was going to attach the beam to. Next, I did a little test fit with the scrap from the beam. Next, I measured up my two inch spacing for my dowels, and then I transferred that to all the framing. I drilled the first hole with the quarter inch bit and tried out the dowel. I did another check with the scrap from the beam just to check out my dowel location. Next, I drilled all the rest of the holes and installed all the dowels. Next, I used the same piece of scrap that I used earlier on the beam as a template and I marked the location of the dowels on the template. Now I just need to drill holes in my template using this 3 8 inch bit. Now I just have to line up the center line on my template with the center line of the beam and everything should be good. I did go inside and try the template and it did fit. There was just one spot. This hole probably needed to come down just a little bit. It's a little bit tight. Other than that, template worked just fine. Now I just need to line up the bottom of my template with the bottom of the mantle and I will put a couple screws in here to secure it when I drill through the template through these pre-drilled holes. Now that I got the template secured to the beam, I will drill through these holes that I've already drilled into the beam to mark it, then remove the template and finish the drilling. And I won't drill this one at the same time because I said it needed to move just a little bit, so I'll drill the other ones, slide this one down, and then drill this one. Next, I just lifted the beam up into place. As you can see, it took a little persuasion, but it did go on the first time. Speaking of persuasion, I did end up having to use a little bit heavier persuasion. Eventually I did get it driven up all the way and this is how it turned out. Now for the lessons that I learned on this project. The issues that I had with this project primarily dealt with installing the beam on the fireplace, not the finishing of the beam itself. 
firstly, I could have left myself more room between the brick veneer and the bolts that I installed on the wall. I measured that pretty close. And then when I installed the beam or went to install the beam onto the dowels, I loosened up a couple of the bricks doing all the hammering that I had to do to drive the, the beam onto the pins. And secondly, I was very careful when I drilled the holes into the beam. I transferred the locations of the dowel to the beam. I even used a template and I took my time and I was very exact with that. But in hindsight, when I went to put the beam on, you saw me hitting it with a, a hammer or two by four, but you didn't see me get out a small sledgehammer and have to hit it because it just wouldn't go. And I think that comes from those dowels were not perfectly aligned or straight. So if I was to do it again, after the first time when I tried to put the beam on, it was too tight. I would have came back and drilled those holes out a little bit bigger into the beam to allow for the misalignment of the dowels. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that would have made the beam go on easier. And if I felt like the beam was too loose, then I could put the screws at an angle or I could put the screws at an angle into the studs, which I end up didn't have to do because the beam was so tight when I put it on the dowels. So hopefully you got some benefit out of this video. And don't forget to check out the German Schmear video I did right here or another one of my videos up here. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.